Hello everyone. Today in our series of Doc Clicks SQL interviews, we have with us Dr. Neelam Mohan, a renowned pediatric gastroenterologist, hepatologist and child liver transplant specialist with more than 21 years of experience. She is the first Indian doctor to start therapeutic uh, endoscopic work for infants and children and she has set up a new division in Medanta Medicity for the same. She has recently been felicitated with the most prestigious award, Dr. B.C. Roy National Award. Thank you, Dr. Neela Mohan, for sharing your time with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with Doc Plexus and I enjoy the readings in Doc Plexus too. Thank you so much. Firstly, congratulations for your great achievement. What motivated you to join this unconventional field of medicine with pediatric gastroenterology, pathology and child liver transplant? Right. At the outset, I would like to say thanks to you and to all uh, my colleagues who must be uh, trying to read or view this. I'm uh, truly blessed to have been, uh, um, you know, it's a great feeling when you're honored by your own cliques for something you've been doing. I've been a, uh, badly called as a workaholic and working all the time. But at the end of the day, probably that's the message I'm going to give youngsters that uh, the route which you take when it's different, it may be laborious, it may be difficult. But sometimes at the end of it, when you see sunshine, you really feel good that the journey that you took was worth all the troubles that you went through. So this was exactly uh, how I went through. And um, you asked me, how did I choose this unconventional topic? Well, at the outset, my dad's dream was that I should become a doctor. And I was uh, very much fond of getting into the administrative services because I believed in power. And, uh, but then I loved him so much that I decided I am going to become a doctor. Fortunately, I had probably the right gray matter, white matter. So I could do very well in my studies and theoretically I was intelligent and not only intelligent, I think I was very hardworking. So uh, once I did that, I realized that and I got, I did it from Osmania Medical College, Hyderabad. And then I moved over to Delhi where I got married too. And I realized that I would have had to sacrifice a lot because Andhra was one state where we were not allowed uh, to, you know, the common entrances were not there. So you couldn't, you know, get into the seats in an All India quota. So you had some restricted seats in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, etc. So at that time, I decided that, yes, I want to do something which is going to be very unique and different uh, because I thought I'm going to be compromising by moving from one state to a different state, maybe that was in my mind. So I shortlisted three things. One was uh, pediatric cardiology, because I did first MD pediatrics and I was very fond of uh, children and the disease uh, pediatric as such. Then I thought genetics. Genetics was very interesting because I thought that the next boom would be trying to know what's happening in gene therapy and all. But then I realized that, uh, you know, in genetics you had to be you know, behind the screen, you're not always with the patient. So I, thinking about, you know, that adrenaline surge, uh, which they say that, you know, that surgeons get a lot of it. And uh, so gastroenterology one was one procedure where I thought there was a lot of uh, uh, respect for the uh, physician because A, it's uh, when you talk about, you know, the endoscopic procedures, it's so you're almost doing so many things which, uh, giving you the kick of uh, doing these procedures. And second thing is, uh, then I wanted to do which is not available in my country. So at that time, liver transplant was not heard of. Nobody knew what was liver transplant. So I said, yes, this is the field I should go to. And uh, if you remember our uh, ex-Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, he had mentioned that why not transplants in India when we're doing everything. So it was during that time when they were talking about organ donation and there was a lot going on in the government sector, thinking and promoting people to think about transplants and all. So that's how I chose uh, to do this. But uh, as we go through, you'll realize it was a very difficult journey because I I had quite a lot of sleepless nights, initially sleepless because I wouldn't get enough work for the transplant. And once 
we went into it then there was a lot of sleepless night because you have a lot of work that kept you awake when you had to do all this transplants so what are the indications of a liver transplant and key decision making points while choosing a donor for pediatric transplant well uh, since this interview is by doctors so it wouldn't be difficult for me to tell them that you need a transplant when your liver fails the liver would fail either because of a chronic disease or because of an acute liver failure acute liver failure is most of the time either due to infection which could be like hepatitis a e or in smaller babies like herpes adenovirus or it could be due to some uh, you know drugs that can give rise to an acute liver failure or sometimes metabolic diseases that can give rise to acute liver failure and sometimes you don't really know why your liver fails because there would be some virus which you couldn't identify so besides this known causes of acute liver failure you have a whole chunk of chronic liver diseases and in children the chronic liver diseases i would divide them into the cholestatic group that means the commonest cause of liver transplant in children is biliary atresia biliary atresia is a condition where the bile duct which is formed from liver to the intestine which supplies the bile or the bilirubin you know to digest your food is not there so that is the commonest cause almost you know 40% of our liver transplants we would do for those causes and next thing is the metabolic metabolic meaning you know instead of a b c d your body has a b d c so there's something which is going wrong in the the chemical locha as uh, munawa would call it is the so the enzymes and uh, uh, genetic issues that give rise to metabolic so these are the two common cause and occasionally it could be due to autoimmune liver diseases some liver tumors which are there something which a lot of doctors don't know and something which quite a lot of pediatricians don't know which is that the inborn errors of metabolism can also be cured by liver transplant for example people you would have heard about uh, you know organic acidemias or uh, you know the uh, urea cycle defects most of the people think that the insult is in the brain because there's a lot of encephalopathy hyperammonemia but actually the culprit is the liver so in the initial stages if you are able to you know get to the base of it where the problem is then you can cure them and i'm very happy to share with you that we are now uh, uh god bless us that uh, we are on the world scene because uh, the some of the work that we i whatever did was uh, which put us to the world scene we did the world's first a domino liver transplant we did the first world's factor 7 deficiency giving rise to transplant we did the asia's first combined liver kidney transplant for hyperoxaluria we did the first citrullinemia so these are the cases of metabolic uh, uh, disorders which have put us at national and international scenario and that was the thing so these are the common causes why the liver fails and so where do you get the liver from you have to throw the bad liver out and put the new liver in so the new liver can come from a cadaver cadaver is a brain dead person so whose you know heart is still beating and the brain is dead so you can give a part of it uh, the liver and the liver will grow as much as the body needs because liver is one organ which regenerates i mean a healthy liver a bad liver won't regenerate so uh, the other option is the living related transplant so in living related liver transplant a family member donates a part of his or her liver to the to the diseased individual to save their life and the liver would grow back in the person who's donating and would also grow in the person who's getting the liver so that's how you would uh, it would regenerate and you would do it but it is very important to understand that we need to do a battery of test on the donor it's not like anybody and everybody so you have to reject donor sometimes in our total series we would have rejected close to around 8 to 10% of the 
people were investigated would have been need to refuse it and that would be either because the liver is fatty because fatty liver is not good so we cannot use fatty liver and you know we have a cut off mark of say 10% for the right lobe and 20% for the left lobe so you can't use those and of course the patient should be not hepatitis b c h i v unless you're actually giving the graft to another of these patients and then uh diabetes and thyroid are not really a contraindication if the liver is not fatty you still can go ahead then you do a battery of test which will see the basic liver kidney functions and all that and then they go uh for the check up from a cardiac from a respiratory physician from a so you go and get a clearance from everybody including a psychiatric that you are giving the liver with your will and wish and not that somebody is you know forcing me to give it to you so that and most important in india we only related livers can be given it's not that um you know you can buy a liver no way just no way and that way i'm very happy that the government has been extremely strict and nowhere and you know in all over the uh, all over the country these rules are very strict that uh, the person has to be because the authorization committee which clears and decides that you know yes this organ can be given is an you know not from the hospital so it's a group of uh, six people or somebody who's been from the government side you know they have been uh, so they have no interest about what's going on in the particular institute so that way i think there's a lot of transparency in a liver transplantation so there there is a completely voluntary body who is monitoring these correct things. correct you it's a, it's a body you you cannot uh, you cannot uh, do a transplant till you get a clearance even if i am in an emergency so in that what happens is according to the rules the kit and kin then the in house hospital can give for example kit and kin means uh mother father for a child or children for the parents brothers sisters and grandparents now these are for this even the hospital committee can give a clearance but if it is anybody beyond this like a, a mama or a chacha or a auntie or a cousin sister then the hospital cannot give clearance you have to have an outside committee which clears it which is there basically to keep transparency So Dr Mohan can you highlight some differences between an adult and a pediatric liver transplant Well actually to uh, be honest you know it's like you must have heard a lot of people saying which is so true uh, the adults have a habit of thinking that child is a miniature adult but it's not true the hemodynamics that you see in children is very different for example uh, two weeks back we transplanted a baby who was just 2 kg So imagine the amount of blood volume that I'm playing with the child is 160 ml the entire blood volume as compared to 5 liters in an adult so there is lot of challenges the amount of the the surgical challenges and the anesthetic challenges the hepatologist challenges the intensive care challenges and so it's like in everything that you need to decide on an eye on an outline you can say that yes you need immunosuppression you need but in general the whole outline may be the same but there are lot of small intricate factors where the children are totally different we have to look into the vaccines we have to look into the nutrition we have to look into um, you know what medicines are suiting and how to talk to a child how to convince the child from going on you just can't take a, a small uh, child and you know you need to talk and then you need to look into their adolescent issues so there are a lot of issues which you need to tackle and sometimes you know i feel that i would i need to look not only into the child but also to the parents you know you there adults you just talking to the patient you i have to be ending up talking to the patient talking to the parents and sometimes if they are young the grandparents are equally young and then you need to so it's like uh, you know uh, there are a lot of challenges that you have but it's uh, really really nice to work with children a they may not be able some of the younger children may not be able to speak so you've got to have that acumen to understand from their expressions what is going around and uh, 
I think you just get off, get about it as you, you know, learn and you're with them. It's that touch which makes, you know, sometimes I go into the ICUs and I start ending up playing with the kid uh, for almost five, ten minutes before even I start looking at the numbers because I know that is going to be a very positive way of dealing with my child rather than just look at the numbers and walk out of the ICU. Okay, so any word of encouragement for doctors who are willing to join the subspeciality? Well, I think not only the speciality, the young doctors, I would have some messages for them. First thing is that do whatever you want, but just be involved and enjoy it. When you enjoy your work, it's not really like a compulsion for you to go and work in that place. So, your, uh, you know, everybody keeps saying about hard work and dedication and passion. So, let me not use these three words for you all because I'm assuming that this will be there. But besides that, I think it's very important uh, to be very honest and not lose your ethics. And... Uh, uh, it is, it's, it's sad that the doctors presently in India are going through a, a little bit of a phase where there's a lot of turmoil, both between the doctors and a lot of public, where they, you know, you're, you're, you're hearing a lot about public beating, you're hearing a lot about over investigations and all. So somewhere down the line, you people, you youngsters have a lot of responsibility to ensure that, you know, through um, your good ethics and honesty and you erase this picture and get back the confidence of your, uh, you know, the people uh, into it. And at the same time, uh, this branch, especially when we talk about gastroenterology and hepatology pediatric, I've been one of the initiators where we started with the first fellowships a training in 2008 I started where it was um, one, training one. So by the grace of God, now there are four institutes which are offering, uh, you know, DM and fellowship two years training and one year training. So what all problems that we had to face in our 20 years back where we didn't, we had to go abroad to get our training. I had to go to England because there was nothing like this in the country. Now at least these systems are there. And you need to uh, be, at, at the same time, you have to learn about, uh, uh, you know, getting your stress out. And I personally do that through two things. I do a lot of uh, uh, yoga and gymming, at least six, seven hours a week. So whether it's early morning or it's night as, as late as nine o'clock or ten, because that those endorphins really help you to get out of stress and uh, because this this branch is very demanding it's not like some people think that everybody wants now to start up transplant centers and do it's not right i think there has to be one or two in every state but at the same time not too many so that there is reference and there is growth in those rather than you know um, competition and so there has to be there is much, much more work involved in this. There's a lot of work because 24 hours into 7 into 365, the top guys have to be practically on call to make sure everything is going right in the right way. Uh, yes, but in short, it was a lovely journey that, and I was happy to get this award from the president for appreciating and getting this uh, work and to realize that children are different and hepatology or gastroenterology or transplant is much different from others. Thank you, Dr. Mohan, for your kind words and sharing your valuable time and knowledge with us. Thank, Thank you. you so much. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy Doc Flexing!